Good morning, Allied Health. Welcome to Thursday, March 4th. Today we are doing asynchronous learning. Um, and so I'm giving you this lesson here in a video that I have recorded um, because I'm unable to be at my computer today due to some family things going on. Um, so we are going to be continuing our talk from Monday. We were talking about our healthy skin, hair, and nails. So on Monday, we covered all of our skin, um, skin problems, how to treat that, how do we keep our skin healthy. Um, so all of that was from our lesson on Monday. Today, we're going to cover those things in, about healthy hair and then also healthy nails, so toenails and fingernails. Um, and so I'm going to be using the same PowerPoint. It's posted on Schoology for you. Um, this is the PowerPoint we started using on Monday, talking about healthy skin, and I'm going to pick up on slide 26. All right, so if you are following along with the PowerPoint, we are on slide 26, and I'm using reading from the book, um, and that is also posted on Schoology, so you can follow along if you would like to follow along in the book also. All right, so slide 26, we are talking about your hair. Your hair protects your skin from UV radiation and it helps you to maintain body heat. Um, so it's not just for looks, it's not just, you know, this thing that we have growing out of our head and on other various parts of our body, but it gives us protection, um, which is so cool. Hair grows on every surface of the skin, except for the palms of our hands and the bottoms of our feet, all right? Um, the rate at which hair grows on other parts of our body is different depending on every person, but it is interesting to note that no person has hair on the palms of their hands or the bottoms of their feet, all right? Um, so interesting fact to start the day. If we uh, move on, we're on slide 27. So your hair is made up of dead cells. Um, they live in the epidermis and those living cells make up new hairs and they cause your hair to grow. Um, so hair helps protect the skin, especially your scalp, from things like from UV radiation. Um, also we have eyebrows and eyelashes and these help protect our eyes from dust. Um, hair can also help us to reduce the amount of heat that is lost through the skin of the scalp. Um, and so it's, you hear the saying, oh, if you wear a hat, you'll stay warmer. That's actually true um, because the hat covers our hair and our scalp and it's trapping all of that heat inside our hair and our scalp um, and making it so that um, that heat isn't escaping even more. Um, so people with a lot of hair, they might stay warmer, um, but people... Um, there's a, a lot of different ways that hair is really good for us. All right. Um, so healthy hair begins with a well-balanced diet. So now we're moving on to slide 28 and talking about how to protect your hair. All right. So healthy hair begins with a well-balanced diet. Um, there's lots of vitamins and minerals and nutrients in your food um, that is really, really good for your hair and that your hair needs. Um, there are other vitamins that you can take, um, but most of those things you can get it through your food without having to buy expensive vitamins that really don't have a whole lot of benefit inside the body. Um, you also want to brush your hair daily. This helps to distribute the natural oils in your hair. So we talked about the um, dermis and the sebaceous glands secreting sebum um, around or on our skin, right? So brushing our hair daily helps to distribute that throughout our hair um, and not having to wash it every single day. Now, this oily buildup depends person to person. It changes from person to person. And so it's important to know that not everybody has the same type of hair. Um, not everybody has the same amount of oil or things like that going on in their hair. Um, let's see, regular shampooing will also help keep your hair healthy. It helps keep that sebum and that oil buildup to um, a minimum. It helps it so that it doesn't stay on your scalp. Um, it's also best to limit the use of harsh chemical treatments such as dyes, bleach, or permanents. Okay, so 
Um, leaving your hair as natural as possible is going to be the best thing for it. Um, not treating it with a bunch of heat or chemicals. Um, it's really healthy if you do not do those things to your hair. Um, let's see. So overexposure to those things can cause your hair to become dry and brittle. It breaks really easy um, and is not as shiny or as um, it doesn't grow as well also. Okay. So on slide 29, we're looking at different types of hair problems. So what are some common hair problems? If we think about our hair, we don't really think about a lot of problems with it. It's kind of just there sometimes. Um, but dandruff is a problem, all right? Dandruff is the dead skin cells that are shed as sticky white flakes when the scalp becomes too dry, all right? So that is a hair problem. We wanna make sure that that doesn't build up on our scalp and within our hair. Um, if itching or scaling persists with dandruff, you definitely want to see your doctor. <coughs> um, but there are some over-the-counter uh, shampoos and things like that that you can use to treat dandruff at home. Um, so try treating it on your own first, but if that persists, if it's scaly or... Um, if it's really, really itchy, then you definitely want to see a doctor and they can give you some medication or medicated shampoo that will help that dandruff. Um, in order to avoid dandruff, you want to keep your hair clean. So regularly shampooing and conditioner, making sure that you're getting all of that excess oil and getting those flakes off of your scalp. Um, it also, shampoo and conditioner helps moisturize your scalp and so that helps you to not build up dandruff also. All right, on slide 30, we're looking at another hair problem. This is head lice, all right? Head lice are tiny parasitic insects that live in the scalp hair of humans, all right? So it lives on your head, um, and they're really, really gross, okay? Um, they feed on blood by biting the scalp. I'm, like, getting the willies even just talking about this. Um, lice are mainly transmitted by head-to-head -head contact, or by using infected brushes, combs, or hats. Uh, so super important, don't share hats with people, don't share hair brushes with people. Um, even if you don't have lice, even if you think that they don't have lice, it's just not a good idea. Don't share these things um, at school, in the locker rooms, um, when you're visiting each other's houses, just don't share them, it's, it's really not healthy. Um, a medicated shampoo is used to kill these organisms, and so you have to um, shampoo with this super potent shampoo that will kill the lice, and then you have to use a really, 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 really fine tip or tooth comb to comb through each hair and make sure there's no eggs um, and make sure that there's no lice left on the scalp. Um, in order to prevent the spread of head lice, you want to wash your sheets, your pillowcases, your combs, and your hats with hot water and soap. Um, and then you can also vacuum often to remove any of those organisms from the carpet. So not a super fun topic to talk about, um, but head lice is very um, relevant and it does spread really quickly in school. Um, so something to think about. Our last topic is going to be healthy food healthy nails, all right? So fingernails and toenails. Um, and so we're on slide 31. Your nails help to protect your fingers and your toes, all right? So that is their purpose. They are there for protection. Um, it is fun to put on nail polish or get acrylics put on or have a manicure. All of those things are fun, um, but our nails are actually there for protection. They are not just there for show. Um, and your fingernails and toenails are made of closely packed dead cells that are called keratin, all right? So um, our fingernails and our toes, they're the same thing that's made up of like horses' hooves um, or animals that have hoofs. Most of them are made of keratin. Um, and so um, our pets have fingernails. <clears throat> and so we need to take care of those just like we take care of ours, right? So if we take our pets to get their nails clipped, we also need to remember to take care of our nails too. All right. So like your, like your hair, um, your hair is also made up of the, these keratin cells, all right? So those dead cells that are really closely packed together. Um, sales, 
or sorry, cells under the root of the nail will divide and multiply, and that's what causes your nail to grow. Um, again, nails are different on every person. They may grow faster, they may grow slower, they may grow in a different direction, they may have a different shape. Um, but for the most part, or sorry, not for the most part, it is a fact. Every human has fingernails and toenails, and they are for protection. On slide 32, um, that's where we're at now. Keeping your nails clean and evenly trimmed to prevent split nails and hang nails is very important. Um, you want to use a nail file to shape and smooth the nails and keep your cuticles pushed back. Um, you can also, if you have a break in the skin around the nail, this is really uncomfortable. So it could be a hang nail, it could be a, a paper cut. Um, anything around the nail is super uncomfortable because we use our hands all the time. Um, but we also have to be very careful of cuts around our fingernails because it's very easy for bacteria and pathogens to enter into those wounds because we use our hands all the time, we're touching things, um, and so we want to make sure that we're washing our hands and covering those wounds if we have them on our fingers. Um, if an infection occurs, you want to keep the area clean and apply an antibiotic ointment if necessary. Okay. <coughs> So on slide 33, it's talking about how do we keep our nails healthy. So keep your nails clean and evenly trimmed. Use a nail file to shape and smooth your nails. Um, if they are growing into the skin, that can create a really big issue and something super uncomfortable called an ingrown nail. Um, that happens most commonly in toes if you wear shoes that are too tight. Um, but you want to make sure that you're shaping and smoothing your nails correctly so that they're not growing in a direction that goes back into your skin. Um, you also want to keep your cuticles pushed back. Um, trim your toenails straight across and just slightly above the skin level. Again, this is where more commonly to get an ingrown nail. Um, and so keeping it in that shape helps to reduce that risk. Um, keeping nails short also reduces the risk of fungal infections under your nails. Um, but fungal infections can be treated with medication also. We saw one of those um, earlier in the slide when I was talking about fungal infections of the skin. There was also a picture of a toenail fungal infection. Um, those can be treated with medicine, but sometimes you do have to see a doctor. All right, so that wraps up our lesson on healthy hair, skin, and nails. I apologize that we did not get this done the other day. Um, we are still adjusting to this new schedule and this shorter time frames that we have with splitting up our class in the morning and the afternoon. Um, I also apologize that I'm unable to be there with you all today. Um, I hope that your Thursday is going well. Um, and I hope that you're having a good week. Now that this lesson is over, you will be able to finish your homework that was posted on Schoology, all right? And that, that homework is due, let me double check, what time is that due? It's due on Thursday, all right? So it is due today. You need to get that turned in before the end of the school day. Um, because we are doing asynchronous work time, you have plenty of time to finish this assignment today. Um, and get it turned in, all right? If you have any questions, you can email me. I will answer as soon as I can, um, but I am away from my computer, so if it takes a little bit longer, please understand. All right, I look forward to seeing you all on Monday. I hope you have a great rest of your week, um, and good luck with your homework, and I will be answering my email if you guys have any questions. All right, have a good weekend.